Welcome to Art with Lorian, the place to reconnect with your inner artist and discover the joy of painting outside the lines. So today we're going to focus on the element of art called color. Um, it's a continuation of my previous episodes where we have been exploring color through creating a color wheel and through painting some color schemes. And so now we're going to dive a little bit more into color schemes through looking at and practicing another color scheme called monochromatic. And what monochromatic means and what monochromatic color schemes are, are one color. And so the word mono is one and, and chroma is color. And so it's focusing on one color and the darks and the midtones and the lights of that color. And so for today's episode, we're gonna make the tints of all 12 of the um, colors of the color wheel, all 12 colors of the rainbow and the color spectrum. And so I went ahead and got started. I have my 12 colors already mixed out, mixed out here. And so you'll want to go ahead and mix them at your own pace. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to be using our 12 colors and then adding white and creating uh, four gradations of a tint for each color on your color wheel. And so what you're going to require today for our painting activity is your Bristol board or your watercolor paper. I'm using Bristol board. Your palette, your paints. Remember, we're, I'm, I'm using these. Whatever paints you have that you're using are great. Um, these are on my supplies list. They're excellent to work with, and if you haven't gotten them, you know, get them and you can come back and do this. But this is what I'm gonna use. And your brushes, your towel, palette knife, and your water container. And I'm still using my spray bottle. I'm, I pretty much use it all the time, so have that handy as well. Okay, so let's get started. So what I did here was I created a, a little, a mini color wheel right in the center of the paper. And I used my pencil, so I, I did want to mention that you have your pencil today. And, because you will require it for sure. Um, there's a little bit of not so much measuring, but marking. This is called marking, and we're gonna be creating guidelines. Um, but what I did was I used this as a reference. That's why color wheels are actually become your tool. And on that note, I have the one that I use that was uh, belonged to someone else I know who's a designer. And these are used in all fields of art and design, and they're sold at every art supply store. And, and you can buy them, they have all different sizes and they're really fancy. They have all the tint, shades, tones. It's amazing, it's this amazing tool. And then we have our one that we made. And so um, they're all really practical. And so what I did was I just made a mini version of this here and it took some effort and it took some planning. So what I did is I labeled each of the individual colors in the color wheel um, just in real light pencil and just in this radial design like the color wheel, but I knew it was gonna be kind of tight here. So I wanted just to give myself that guideline or those, those names so I could see exactly where I was gonna put them in regards to spacing. And so that's, that's what I did for that. And then, so you'll go ahead and do that. You'll mix your 12 colors, your primaries, secondaries, and tertiary colors, and then Go ahead and just paint one by one in a circular fashion, a really small version of the color wheel. And then when you're done with that, you're gonna take your pencil again and draw very light guidelines that emanate or radiate off of each of the, of the colors. And it'll look kind of like a sun, but what this is gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lay down our four gradations or tints of, that are getting lighter in hue by adding white uh, to each of the colors and that's what we're going to do today. So you may want to pause the video while you go ahead and create this mini color wheel with your 12 colors, your primary, secondaries, and tertiaries. And then you can work at your own pace and take your time and then come back and return so that you can go ahead and follow along with what we're gonna do today using the color white. So you'll have your 12 colors painted, and in addition, you're gonna be using 
white. It just says white. Blanco and Blanc. So <laughs> we're going to be using white and we're going to create four gradations of each color going outward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with red. I'm going to put a little bit of my white down. And one of the golden, golden rules about mixing paints to stretch out the life of your paint and to be economical with using these paints and making them last, uh, especially the lighter colors, is always to add the dark, darker hue to the lighter color. So in this case, the white is definitely the lightest. And so why we do that and why that order is so important is because um, the obvious that you don't, you just need to use a little bit of red to the white and you get a very strong pink. And if we went the opposite, we'd have to add lots and lots of white, amounts of white to get that same color if we went adding white to red. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of the red to the white and mix it here with my palette knife and also my brush. And this is gonna be the first gradation. Now yours, ours are gonna look different and there's no right uh, tint. There's no correct number of um, gradations of tint. Just make sure you have four that are differentiated and you'll see what I mean. You have four that get lighter and lighter and lighter, okay? So I'm gonna start with this one. It's kind of like a salmon color and make sure you have clean water in your water holder. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in here. And you can see that it is a little bit lighter than the red. Hopefully you can see that. And it ought to be. And then the second thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add just a little bit more white to that. And and there's that. And so I'm just going to continue on with my tints. They get lighter and lighter. And that's that's a good that's a good tint there, I think. So that's what you're going to do. Is you're going to do that for each of your 12 colors. So you'll go ahead after each color, rinse your brushes. I'm gonna move on to blue, and I'm gonna do the primary colors first, actually. Um, and then move on to the secondaries and the tertiaries. So moving on into the blues, um, same idea. You're gonna take the blue, add it to the white, and you're gonna get a nice baby blue. You'll see, and actually sometimes you start with the lightest color and get darker, but I'm actually, I'm gonna go in the right order here, meaning blue and then a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. Yeah, so see this jump? That, that's actually too, too extreme. I'm gonna darken that. I'm gonna put a little bit more blue in that. And you'll see, you'll get a feel for the four gradations. So as you can see, I laid down my blues and I took some time to kind of massage the colors and get them to the tints, the four different gradations where you can actually see that, that lighter uh, tint happening. And I'm happy with that. And I'm gonna move on to yellow. And so just again, you're working at your own pace and remembering that this does take time and to enjoy yourself and you know take breaks and all that good stuff. So, so as you can see, I put my yellows down and I am taking the time to kind of fine tune. Yellow tints are a challenge. They are, um, yes, they will take you some time and focus and just be patient and from what I understand, uh, you may not even see what I have here, but I know what it looks like and I'll, I'll pull it up. So the yellows may look all the same to you, <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I, I can see the differences between each one, I promise. And so I'm gonna go ahead and move on now to orange and keep going through the color circle. 
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix my orange tints. So you can go ahead and do whatever you're doing. Maybe you've changed the order. You're doing your own order. I'm gonna go ahead and do my orange tints. And that is totally fine if you wanna go ahead and do that. Um, or if you did that, if you were on a different order here. <laughs> so I'm gonna add my my orange and white, and I'm, this is a straight orange, plain orange, orange orange, not yellow orange. I'm gonna go through the secondaries now. Mm hmm. And they're gonna get lighter and lighter. And just like we did before, we're going to. Now I do this a lot. I start to do this where I use two brushes at once and that may become a habit for you as well. It's kind of fun. Um, so we have our orange tints coming in. And also if you notice I am mixing a little bit on the paper which is another habit I've developed sometimes. Um, but that's not something that you have to do either. Okay, my paints are getting a little dried out. All right, so continuing on, I'm gonna just keep going. Yeah, so there's my, my orange. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do another secondary color. I'm gonna do uh, paint purple, purple, tints of purple. So as you can see, I finished up my purple and it did challenge me some and I stuck with it and I'm satisfied with my results. And I'm gonna move on to the secondary color of green now. And so I've completed all of my primary red, yellow, and blue and secondary colors, orange, purple, and green. And we're gonna continue and complete this episode with the tertiary colors and their tints. So I went ahead and started with my tertiary tints and I did an orange, red, red orange. And now I'm gonna move over to the purple, red purple, the purple family. And same processes that we, process that we use to create our secondary and primaries and just going through the color wheel. So, so here are my blue greens. And there are the four gradations. And if you would like more of a challenge, um, I just want to put it out there that you can take any of these gradations and add a couple of tints. So we, I chose for us to do four. And because I knew it would be manageable, it would be fun, it would still be a challenge. Um, and, well, it is to me. <laughs> and if it is, if it is too easy or, or you would like more of a challenge, by all means add two more on and do six. And so then you're really gonna have to, you know, fine tune each one and get that lighter and lighter and lighter and, and the, you know, you'll see, you know what I mean. So you can do six, eight, ten, and um, and if you've been, you know, if you've looked at the paint chips at the, at the hardware stores or wherever, they have lots and lots of gradations. I mean, it's so, this is just, this is a very kind of basic, you know, exercise and you can really extend it as far as you like. So here we are working on our final color of this color wheel and these tertiary colors. And I'm just sort of, I am massaging or fine tuning my tints here. And yeah, it's, it's getting there, it's getting there. So here we are, the last of my tertiary colors, my orange, yellow, and these are all the, the tints and the monochromatic color scheme theme of this and the next two episodes. And I'm reminded of this artist that I really like and I'd like to share her with you. Her name is Agnes Martin. She is an artist who painted with many of the monochromatic tints. She used a very subdued, subtle, and sublime, very beautiful color palette that was um, 
had a lot of tints and it was very ethereal and beautiful and she was kind of called a minimalist but she called herself an abstract expressionist. She's a fascinating woman and so her art is very monochromatic and at, at some of her paintings and her work is very much in the tints realm of the color palette and so she's very inspirational to me and maybe you'll find her or other artists inspirational to you that paint using these monochromatic color schemes these are just and so here it is my 12 colors of the color wheel using white in each gradation a little bit more and creating tints of these 12 colors and I hope you enjoyed yourself. I look forward to sharing with you next episode more about monochromatic colors and the color scheme and mixing paints and creating another awesome painting. So until then, I'll see you in the studio.